Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Dance Models, where you never know what we're going to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is an Amtrak coach. Here, yeah. Uh, oh, John, John here with Dan. Yeah. Uh, I'm wearing a disguise off camera, but uh, yeah, so what's going on with this thing? Um, well, this is a Walther's Superliner car, and uh, actually someone on our YouTube channel posted a question a while back about adjusting the coupler height on Walther's cars. Uh-huh. And I thought that that was a topic that warranted a video. Yeah, I don't think we've talked about that specifically before. Right, because the Walther's um, passenger cars, the way they're set up, have a couple of wrinkles that you don't always see in other cars. So I thought it would be worth talking about. All right. Whoa, that looks way off. I mean, yeah, it's pretty I high. Barely have to even get the camera level with it, and it's like, <laughs> yeah. So this car still has its stock uh, couplers on it. I think they're Proto Max. Walters calls them. They're kind of a, a copy of a KD number five. Okay. Um, so I'll probably change those to KD one fifty eights or something, but um, it's not going to solve the height problem just doing that. Okay, so what is that the first step? Or what? well, I just wanted to show how how off it is first, and then uh, how to fix it. I'll take this truck off and screw it. So normally, when a car is too high, what I like to do is to shave the bolster. Right, you do it with a file, right? With a file, yeah, and it lowers the car. The problem with a lot of Walther's cars, though is that they have these screws oh, that and get, that gets in the way, doesn't it? And they have these, uh, metal contacts. Is that for lighting pickup? Or? Yeah. It's this car's lighted and the electricity, you know, gets transferred from here to here through these contacts. The trouble is, is that the tr oftentimes the trucks are actually resting on the contacts and not the bolster itself. Uh -huh. So if you shave the bolster, nothing happens. Oh, that's, Oh, and the other problem is because these are spongy, sometimes the car height is not even constant. It varies <laughs> a uh, little bit. Okay, that's a real design flaw. Yeah, so um, this requires a little bit more work. Now, you can, for example, take a motor tool or something and grind the heads of the screws down a little. That's what I'd be um, inclined to do. Yeah, I've tried that, um, but I want to try something else with this car. So I'm going to unscrew uh box cover here right so i'll get rid of the coupler spring why do we get the feeling this is going to be a big big pain uh well, hopefully not too big it is a little bit of a pain but i i guess while you're doing this um now i'm going to remove the rest of the coupler box okay while you're doing this i want to mention because this comes up all the time and there's somebody watching right now going why does he care about the coupler height? And it's a recurring theme for us. We've been doing this for a long time, and this happens every time we put a video up like this. People are perplexed at why, you know? Yeah. And the answer to the question is, if you run a train that's longer than two cars <laughs> or three cars, or if you're running a train on grades on a layout, they'll come uncoupled if the coupler height isn't right. Yeah, or they can anyway, especially if you get uneven track or like like John said, grades where there's more stress on the couplers. So that's why this is done, and that's why coupler height matters. Right. It's an operational thing. Right. Okay, so I've removed the trucks and couplers, and now I need to remove the body from the floor. Oh, do you have to take those off to get it apart or what? Yeah, uh, I need to take the car apart. So... Um, this is a little tricky because it's the the sides and the windows are held to the floor with little tabs. Yeah. So you kind of got to get a uh, like a chisel blade in there and kind of work it loose. Make sure you work the windows loose too, because there's a there's one sheet of the exterior of the car, and then there's another sheet that's the the glazing. Uh huh. And you got to get behind both of those. Yeah. And work them away from the floor. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, and then, you know, you can, once you get one started, you can kind of... You wedge it? Wedge something in there, and it'll start to come off. There's, I don't want to wedge it too much, because I don't want to break it, but um, I need to do this to both sides until the whole floor will lift out. 
Just think they, they should have just made those stupid couplers at the right height in the first place. You wouldn't have to go through all this. Yeah, this is the same procedure you'd have to do if you wanted to install a lighting kit. This car already has one, but, yeah, you know, if you needed to. Several minutes later. <laughs> yeah, it no. took a while to work it out, but now the whole floor assembly should lift out of the car. I was impressed, Dan. There wasn't any cussing, really. Yeah. Coming from that side of the table. Yes, well, it's trying not to you know it's a family show but the camera wasn't running yeah <laughs> so this thing is very very tricky to get apart well, really. me, I have a stupid question and I really hope that the answer is not what I think it is um, say you do whatever you're gonna do and uh -huh. uh, you only have to put that shell back on once, right? Like you don't have to keep taking it off to recheck after you're no. I don't think just. I don't think so. Okay. Hope. So what? I, I, what, I know I'm going to find out because if I keep watching, but what are you going to do? There just hard? Go. Are you going to hardwire the the contact so that you can mess with the height by filing it or what? Well, yeah, that's the idea. I want to get rid of these spring springs. Oh, these those things. things yeah, um, and wire the. Just hardwire it with some wire so that the truck is actually resting on the bolster. Okay, that's what I thought you were, after yeah, I thought about this for a minute. That's I, where we're yeah. going with it. So the contact strips, unfortunately, run seem to run the entire length of the car under all the interior stuff. Oh, nice. So you can take it out, and you could probably fish them out that way, but um, I think it would be faster just to cut them. So I have some uh, shears that are designed for photo etched metal parts, uh -huh. and I'm going to use those. push up on it a little bit so I can get under it. Oh, I see how that keeps the pressure down. Yeah. yeah. Cut it out. And now this little piece will just fall out. So you're going to cut all three of the rest of them? Yeah. Hey, it, it looks like it's right now. Yeah. I temporarily um, put one of the couplers back on. And actually, I put a, a KD-158 instead of the original coupler. And I just have the car sitting on its trucks now. Well, the interior of the car, anyway. And as you can see, the coupler's just about exactly right now. What's up with that? Well, because those, those springs aren't pushing down on those screws anymore. You know, it seems like a really stupid design to have it, those things. I yeah, mean, it would have been better if they just wired it like I'm going to do in a minute. Yeah. I mean, I understand what they were doing and why they had those there, but... <laughs> Well, you know, I th they, manufacturers do a lot of things for um, convenience of manufacture. Yeah. Um, and soldering wires, I think, you know, that takes someone actually sitting there doing that. Yeah, but so, I mean, somebody would have to sit there and put those spring things in, too. So it's yeah, like, I suppose. pick your thing, right? Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, um, <laughs> I think this will fix it. <laughs> Looks like it should. Yeah. I've got some small gauge. Uh, this is actually 36 gauge stranded wire. Yeah. Uh, same type of wire you might use to do a decoder installation. Gee, I wonder why you have that. Yeah, go figure. Um, and I'm just going to loosen one of these screws on each side. And I tinned the end of this so it won't fray too much. And then just hook it around there and screw it down. I'm surprised you're not just soldering it. Uh, I don't know if it's... Not all metal solders well, as I found out when I was playing with the car. Which I'll talk about in a minute. So I'm going to feed these wires through the holes where those spring things were. Oh, oh, I see what you're doing, yeah. Yeah, and then we can go ahead and reattach the truck. Looks like it's threaded all the way to the top, huh? Yeah, I threaded it through where this metal strip comes through the floor um, to help keep the wires out of, you know, anywhere they might snag on the car when I'm putting it back together. Oh, I see what you're talking about, right? Because it could pinch or right yeah, or come off, right? Yeah. Also, I want to leave a little bit of slack in here so I can remove the truck part way in case I need to do any more adjustments. I was thinking that as you were, you know, as I was watching you put this back together, I was thinking how much of a pain it'll be if you end up having to file the bolster still. Yeah. So that's why I left a little slack here so that that would still be possible. <laughs> now, my original thought was to solder these wires to these metal strips. However, these metal strips don't seem to want to take any solder. I don't know what they're made of, but I just can't get them to take anything. So hmm. um, what I ended up doing on the other end was to peel some of this backing material away. 
Can you solder it to the thing itself? Yeah, that's what I want to do. So we've got to peel some of this black stuff away. And there's um, the place where the metal contact hooks around. It's got a little solder on it on the circuit board itself. So, oh, I see. So that's what I'm going to solder to. So I soldered the wires right up there, like I said, at the circuit board where those metal contact strips touch it. It looks like it's working. Yeah, and now I have it on a live track, and before I put it back together, I want to make sure it all works. So uh, it's working. I lift one end, still works. Lift the other end, still works. So I got good contact on both ends. So now I need to gently coax this car back together. Without breaking something, Dan. Yeah, without breaking something. And one good thing is that the wires are behind these areas of the car that have no windows, so you won't ever see them. Yeah. Um, also, this, this open area here is where the doors are. Because mm -hmm. if you flip the interior around, it'll be backwards. Oh, so, it won't match, will it? Yeah. So now I just kind of have to work it in here. It may take a little um, effort. <laughs> it may have to happen off screen during yeah, the magic. I think, I think it might, yeah. The magic of editing. Yeah. People who watch these videos completed and edited and all put together and cut down to time and all that have no appreciation for how much time this stuff takes. <laughs> Because Dan just got the thing back together, found out that one of the wires had come undone or that was soldered to the contacts inside, had to take the whole thing apart again, re-solder it, put it back together. I mean, this stuff, <laughs> it takes a long time. Uh -huh. And there wasn't too much cussing, but a little bit. Yeah. So good news and bad news. Um, I got the car back together. <laughs> and it was, right, the lights are working now. Right. Um, bad news is the couplers are still a little bit high. Isn't that weird? Didn't you just check it and they were right? I did. The only, um, it could be that the floor wasn't quite straight when, the, when it didn't have the car body supporting it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so anyway, I may, I'm probably going to have to end up filing the bolsters a little bit anyway to finish it up. I guess we'll see what that looks like next. Yeah. So because I allowed some slack, I have a little room. So what I'm going to do is unscrew these wires, uh, fiddle with the bolster until I get the coupler height right, and then put it back on and the wires back on oh then it will be done huh yeah so what i'm going to file is this ring right here yeah we'll come back and show that in a minute yeah so is this one of those things dan where you have to be careful not to take too much and you have to like keep putting it back on and putting it back on and putting it back yeah it's kind of a pain uh, yeah we'll be back in another 45 minutes and that'll be two seconds to you <laughs> <laughs> So that really didn't actually take all that long because, as I quickly found out, this center section here is made of plastic. <laughs> so it uh, files very fast. It does, yeah. I was expecting it was die-cast metal for some reason, although that would short-circuit the truck. So, of course, it really couldn't be. But um, <laughs> in any case, you don't want to go too, too uh, gonzo with that, um, you know, just a little at a time. Yeah, because otherwise what would happen? You'd have to raise it back up you'd somehow. You'd have to raise huh? it back up, and then you'd have to find a washer that would fit here and that could be a uh, that's a really big uh, yeah. shaft isn't it yeah it is Jeez. so um there's more good news and more bad news yeah so You're, we're looking at the good news right yeah the couplers are now at the right height okay show us the bad news dan <laughs> <laughs> we got a wobbler yeah it's a wobbler this does not yet pass my green dot test it doesn't even get to the green dot <laughs> test <laughs> yeah so what's so happening there i the, guess it's uh I have to turn the car over to show you. And yes, if you were wondering, these cars are designed to be as much of a pain as possible to work on. Yes, they did that on purpose. <laughs> yes, they did. Um, so what's happening is this part here, which was flush with the bottom of the truck. I, I can see it moving as you're doing that. Yeah, is now sticking up, or well, sticking down, actually, because the car's upside down. Um, too much and now when you put the screw in it doesn't tighten all the way because this it stops here and this is still free to flop around so at least one of these trucks um has to be tight so it doesn't move side to side right so the car won't rock so i need to file this now oh and boy file that down <laughs> it never ends nope see as soon as he's done doing it's gonna fix it are we going to find something else? Oh, I hope not. It's messed up. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope this is the end of it. It's getting late. <laughs> <laughs> All 
Are we thinking it's low enough now? I think so, because now this is pretty much flush with, with this. Should be able to tighten the screw down and hold the truck better now. Okay, now it's done. <laughs> so this time there's only good news. Yeah, see, now it, it doesn't wobble too much. It just stops itself. It's always good on a car to have a three-point suspension. So I'm going to go ahead and leave one of the trucks loose. Uh-huh. Because, um, you know, you want one of them to be loose so it'll go over rough track. Right. And then the other one to be more or less rigid side to side so that the car won't rock back and forth. So it won't be a wobbler. Yeah. Exactly. And now the couplers are at the right height. The wheels are engaged. Everything's cool. This car's ready for the service. Right. See, but there's one thing that happened off camera that people don't know about. I'm going to tell them right now. Okay. Just to give an idea of how everything goes wrong. Yeah. Dan went to give this his green dot. You know, yeah. his green dot. Why don't you explain what the green dot is? A well, green dot means that the a car has... Uh, KD couplers, it's got the KD couplers mounted at the right height. Uh, the trip pins are adjusted. The wheels are engaged, and the car is a three-point suspension, so it doesn't rock. That's my own little system that I came up with. Right. So and in other words, it's ready now for right for your and layout. When when I get a car ready for that and it passes all the tests, I actually get some green paint and I I take a little, uh, usually a little piece of wire or something. I don't want to dirty a brush, you know, for that. And, and I just stick a little dot of green paint somewhere on the bottom in an inconspicuous place where it won't be seen so that you'll know that it has right and i also have some green stickers and i usually put one of those on the box so that i know that i've done that car um but and i have this little bottle of green paint sitting here and i couldn't get the bottle open <laughs> you couldn't open the paint <laughs> no i couldn't open the paint <laughs> bottle so the the actual green dot will have to wait till later <laughs> but it's good to go so we're good <laughs> i'm tired so uh, yeah yeah we'll catch everybody on the next episode hey if you like our content please hit the thumbs up thing and subscribe and share it with all your friends yeah <laughs> it helps us out and uh yeah we'll see you next time when we're not so tired okay